whiskey is not a drink whiskey is a philosophy of life often referred to as the nectar of gods and for a good reason the origins of whiskey production still remains unknown the ancient practice of distilling spirits namely whiskey is rather fascinating and filled with a strong heritage did you know every bottle of whiskey has an amazing story behind its being hello namaste i am kalpana welcome to the queen's cut i am here to take you through this wonderful journey called the water of life let's together venture into the world of whiskey are you ready pour a drink grab a chair let's get started records show that people were distilling spirits as early as 1116 bc in china where it was believed that men cannot live without their spirits the egyptians were also distilling spirits from barley which is still the most important grain used in the manufacture it is difficult to say when did the art of distillation came to scotland but we surely know that it has wandered a long way before it reached the land of the scots by the 8th century ad the arabs refined the techniques of distilling they used it to create rose oil perfumes and balms balms were used to preserve the dead bodies and then it reached to spain and europe the techniques of distillation then spread their way north into scotland through ireland while other europeans were converting grapes into wines and using it as the beverage to distill into a spirit the scots and irish due to the lack of grapes turned to fermenting grains such as barley which was available in abundance to produce alcoholic beverage to distill distillation was used more or less throughout the world and was likely used to produce alcoholic beverages for a long time but there has been no proper evidence documented about it anywhere distilling techniques were brought into ireland and scotland somewhere between 1100 and 1300 bc they were brought by the monks the monks who were not only well educated but they were very well traveled so now we know the word whiskey actually testifies to the monastic heritage water of life a general term used across the christian world for distilled spirits more commonly rendered as aqua vitae in latin the term survives today in drinks such as Ude vi in France, aqua vita in Italy, aqua vit in Scandinavia, and oco vita in Poland. In Gaelic, which is a Celtic dialect spoken in the Highlands of Scotland, it was called Ishkeba. The earliest mention of whiskey in Ireland comes from the Annals of Clone MacNoy. an ancient irish book of history which attributes the death of a chieftain in 1405 taking a surfeit of aqua vitae at christmas that simply meant that the chieftain died due to consuming a lot of aqua vitae which is the alcoholic spirit in fact there are a few pieces of written evidence showing that kings and the royalties had great liking for this drink and were often involved in granting supplies to monks for the distillation of whiskey throughout the 1400s ireland and scotland continued distillation in full swing whiskey was bought sold and consumed regularly the whiskey distillation remained with the monasteries until King Henry VIII of England dissolved the monasteries between 1536 and 1541 to secularize the whiskey production sending all the monks out into the general public 
during the renaissance era whiskey was very potent and not diluted and could even be dangerous and fatal at times prior to being barrel or cask aged whiskey was most typically consumed raw straight from the still the aging of whiskey in the cask was most likely discovered by accident during the 1800s during the 19th century, a blight caused by phylloxera insect destroyed the entire wine harvest in the cognac region of France. With cognac supply being hugely affected in England and Scotland, Spanish sherry was imported as an alternative. As it was not cost effective to ship the empty barrels back to Spain, the Scottish distillers seized the opportunity to buy these barrels which were of a very higher quality than the vessels that they were previously storing the whiskey produce in. Around this time, the first ever licensed whiskey distillery made its debut in 1608, the Old Bushmills Distillery which was licensed in Northern Ireland, making it the world's very first official whiskey distillery. In 1707, the Acts of Union merged Scotland and England, creating Great Britain, after which the taxes on malts and whiskey distillation rose dramatically leading most of the Scotland's distillers either to shut down or operate underground forcefully. Scotch whisky was hidden under altars, in coffin and in any available space to avoid the government's excisemen. Lots of Scottish distillers who were operating from their homes started distilling whisky in the night. The reason? darkness hid the smoke from the stills and so whiskey was also referred as moonshine for a very long time. At one point it was estimated that over half of the Scottish distillers were all operating illegally. What is true however is that whiskey has a long and proud tradition of being distilled on the slide. There was a distinction between Parliament whisky, which was distilled under license from the Crown, and there was Pochin whisky, which was distilled under license from no one, perhaps God Himself. Throughout the storms which battered the legal Irish whisky industry over the centuries, small scale Pochin distilling proved much more robust. As per the records, in 1779, the number of licensed distilleries in Ireland dropped to just 20 from more than 800 illegal stills. It may sound shocking to hear, the distillation of whiskey in Scotland and Ireland was illegal until 1823, when the United Kingdom brought illegal production to an end and they gave Scottish and Irish distillers an option to legalize their operations by paying a nominal fee. And this brought more improvement in the distillation process, which included the introduction of the coffee still or the column still, which is still date used to produce in most of the American whiskey. This was considered a superior method to the pot still. Until now, the spirit, illicit or otherwise, had been just malt whiskey. But in 1831, Anais Coffey, an Irish exciseman, invented the patent still, which enabled a continuous process of distillation to take place. This led to the production of grain whiskey a different, less intense spirit than malt whiskey. The lighter flavored green whiskey, when blended with the more potent and fiery malts, extended the appeal of Scotch whiskey to a considerably wide market. Smuggling died out almost completely over the next decade. And in fact, 
a many of the present day distilleries still stand proudly on the same place which was used by the smugglers over the centuries ago so how did the world come to know about scotch a spot of luck helped global expansion for the scotch whiskey in the 1880s the phylloxera beetle devastated french vineyards completely and within few years wine and brandy had virtually disappeared from the cellars everywhere and taking a quick advantage of this the legends of whiskey world like james buchanan tommy doer johnny walker and james shivers took scotch out of the scotland for the first time during the 19th century using their entrepreneurial skill they took whiskey out to the british empire and far beyond creating an enduring love of scotch from hong kong to hanoi sydney to san francisco montreal to mumbai cape town to the cape verde island by the time the french industry recovered from the phylloxera scotch whiskey had replaced brandy and wine as the preferred spirit of choice the export markets that they built are the foundation stone of scotch whiskey's success today it's time that we raise a toast for the unsung whiskey heroes who created this beautiful elixir of life for us slanche i hope that you enjoyed this wonderful journey of whiskey history Thank you for being with me on the Queen's Cut. Until next time, cheers and remember to drink responsibly. After all, whiskey people are good people.